The lat muscles, when well developed, make a huge visual impact on your physique. This is partly due to the fact that they're a massive muscle group that takes up most of the back surface area and are an incredibly strong muscle group because of this. The lats also help to build the V taper, which gives you the appearance of a smaller waist due to adding width to your frame. So, if your goal is to achieve an aesthetic physique that commands attention, building bigger lats is a must. In this video, I'll be sharing the 7 best back exercises for wider lats. But first, let's quickly go over the basic anatomy of the lat muscles and their functions. If we look at the muscle fiber orientation of the lat muscles, we'll notice that they run diagonally in an upward and outward direction, originating from the final thoracic spine down to the iliac crest and inserting at the intratubercular groove of the humerus. Thus, when contracting, the lats pull the arm down toward the body, whether in a sagittal or frontal plane, making their primary functions extension and adduction of the arm. Some other lesser known functions of the lats are internal rotation of the shoulder as well as lateral flexion of the spine. And while the lats consist of three regions, the thoracic, lumbar and pelvic respectively, they cannot be isolated completely. That said, there are ways to emphasize a certain region over the others. To keep things simple, as long as you're incorporating some type of horizontal pulling movement as well as a vertical pulling movement, you'll have no problem building the entire lat musculature. And finally, there's one simple cue you can use to further increase the effectiveness of any lat-based exercise. Rather than pulling back, pull your upper arm down toward the body, whether you're pulling in the sagittal or frontal plane. A simple way to achieve this is by focusing on driving the elbows toward the hips. This, as opposed to pulling back, focuses more on shoulder extension, the main function of the lats, and minimizes scapular movement, which will cause you to recruit the other back muscles. So, now that we have a better understanding of the lat muscles and how they work, let's jump into the 7 best back exercises for wider lats. Exercise number 1, pull downs or pull ups. Pull ups or pull downs are a staple in most training programs and for good reason. The middle and inferior divisions of the lats, the lumbar and pelvic regions, are great shoulder adductors. Looking at this study from the Journal of Anatomy, we can see that the shoulder adduction moment arm peaks around 60 to 70 degrees of shoulder flexion. This is where the bar is about face level from your forehead to your chin. As far as hand position, most studies point to using a medium to wide grip. First, because our aim for this exercise is to train adduction and not extension, you want your arms to be moving in the frontal plane or with your arms out to your sides, which isn't possible with a narrow grip. Second, since your arms will be raised in a wide position and not straight up, the wider grip means a reduction in humeral elevation. Thus, it keeps the range of motion where the lumbopelvic division of the lats have the greatest leverage. One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared different grips on the lat pulldown. A V-bar with hands in a neutral position, an underhand pull down similar to a chin up, an overhand pull down similar to a pull up, and an overhand behind the back pull down. They found that the pronated in front of the body variation led to the highest activation in the lats and therefore when applied to a pull up, which is essentially the same fundamental movement pattern, should be the same. Another study published in the same journal showed that using a wider grip of one to two times your biacromial distance elicits greater activation in the lats. So whether you're performing pull ups or pull downs, it's best to train them with a medium to wide grip grip, pulling just enough for the bar to reach face level while focusing on driving your elbows to your hips rather than pulling back. Exercise number two, 
underhand barbell row. The barbell row is a staple lat builder and probably the best exercise for applying maximal loads through the lats while still providing a decent range of motion. Using a supinated or underhand grip as opposed to a pronated grip externally rotates the shoulder, putting a bit more of a stretch on the muscle. Remember, one of the lat's functions is to internally rotate the shoulder. Not only that, but gripping the bar underhand will also allow you to keep your elbows closer to your body, placing a bit more emphasis on the lats. And if you want to take it a step further, try keeping your scapula retracted throughout the lift as this leads to higher lat activation. Exercise number three, close grip chest supported row. The more stability you have, the easier it becomes to focus all of the tension on the target muscle. So, rather than engaging the core and stabilizing your spine as you would with a non-supported variation, the chest-supported row allows most nerve impulses, which determine how many muscle fibers are activated, to be spent on the target muscle. According to this study, the lats shoulder extension moment arms peak between 25 and 55 degrees. Another study published in the Journal of Electromyography and Kinesiology showed that the lats are most strongly activated at lower shoulder elevation angles. And while the thoracic division of the lats has the greatest leverage for shoulder extension, it doesn't contribute greatly when pulling past the anatomical position since other back muscles that attach to the scapula will become more involved. So to keep the focus on the lats, row only until the upper arms are in line with your torso contracting your lats as hard as possible as you reach the end range. Exercise number four, one arm sagittal plane pull down. This uncommon pull down variation follows the diagonal fiber orientation of the lats with a high to low pull. For this type of pull down, the peak forces will always occur where the superior fibers have the most leverage. To perform the exercise effectively, set the cable up so the handle is just slightly above your head. Then, drive the elbow down to the hips to emphasize the extension motion. To avoid losing tension in the lats, avoid swaying or leaning as you pull. This can be done by keeping your torso rigid while focusing on moving only your arm down towards your side. Exercise number five, T-bar row. The main difference between barbell rows and T-bar rows is T-bar rows force the weight to move in a fixed arc, so you're free to focus more on just pulling the bar up and into your body. Since it's still a free weight exercise, the resistance profile makes it so that the weight is heaviest at the bottom of the range due to the angle of the bar. And since the lats are strong at longer lengths, this exercise is great for overloading the stretched position. To make this exercise more effective, for building your lats, try keeping your torso as close to parallel to the floor as possible, making this more of a pull and less of a shrug. From there, reach for the floor and accentuate the stretch to create a better challenge for the lats where they're at their strongest. Exercise number six, Meadows Row. From the late John Meadows, this landmine row variation provides a complete range of motion. Traditional landmine rows are done with the bar parallel to your torso, which causes an awkward position as the plates brush against your body, limiting your range of motion and forcing you to flare your elbows to accommodate the weights. And as we know, the closer your elbows are to your torso during pulling movements, the more lat focused the movement becomes. So to start, position the bar perpendicular to your torso in the bent over position. From there, get into a staggered stance with your working side leg behind you. Brace your non-working arm on the front leg to keep your torso stable, creating a solid base to pull from. Grab the sleeve of the bar with your arm extended, then as you row, pull the bar towards your hips. This again follows the optimal line of pull for training the lats. When you load the bar, make sure to load it with smaller 10 to 25 pound plates as this allows for a greater range of motion since it won't be limited by the larger plates touching the floor. And number seven, swimmer row. 
Like the pull-up, this exercise targets the lats in their length and range. This exercise will help to replace a straight arm pull-down with a bar, which you're probably already doing. The swimmer row is effective for a few reasons. First, we're removing any assistance from the biceps, completely isolating the target muscle. Second, using the rope gives you more room to maneuver at the shoulder joint, leading to a better stretch on the lats. And lastly, you'll be able to get into a deeper degree of shoulder extension, which means a deeper contraction, whereas using the bar means the movement is stopped by the bar hitting your body. To perform this exercise effectively, sit your hips back on the negative in order to get into a deeper degree degree of shoulder flexion, thus getting a deeper stretch on the lats. And if you really want to feel the contraction with this one, consciously focus on driving the rope as far back and wide apart as possible. So there you have it, the 7 best back exercises for wider lats and a few tweaks you can use to make them more effective. And remember, this list of exercises is intended to provide different options for you to choose from. While I wouldn't suggest incorporating all of these exercises into your training, I do recommend picking a few from the list and rotating through them over time. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.